नमस्कार दोस्तों नमस्कार दोस्तों मेरा नाम संजय जोशी है और मैं प्रतिरोध का सिनेमा का कार्यकर्ता हूं 22 तारीख से 22 अक्टूबर से हम सभी फिल्म बिरादरी के लोग एक मुहिम में जुटे हैं हम मुहिम में जुटे हैं क्योंकि बहुत अच्छे दिन आ गए हैं आलू पचास रुपए से कम नहीं है प्याज अस्सी पे पहुंच रहा है पेट्रोल अस्सी इक्यासी पे अटका हुआ है हम क्या खाएंगे क्या सुनेंगे क्या पहनेंगे इस पे हमें लोगों से पूछना पड़ेगा सत्ताओं से पूछना पड़ेगा हम क्या करके बचे रहेंगे इसका कोई फॉर्मूला किसी के पास नहीं है एक अजब गजब लीला चल रही है ऐसे समय में हिंदुस्तान के पांच सिनेमा कलेक्टिव प्रतिरोध का सिनेमा पेडिसन पिक्चर्स मरुपकम विकल्प पृथ्वी और पीपल्स फिल्म कलेक्टिव इन सब लोगों ने इन सब समूहों ने मिलकर एक मुहिम चलाई है और इस मुहिम का नाम है इन सॉलिडिटी फेस्टिवल ऑफ फिल्म्स बाय सबा दीवान एंड राहुल रॉय एक जुटता सबा दीवान और राहुल रॉय की फिल्मों के साथ ये राहुल रॉय बंबई वाले एक्टर राहुल रॉय नहीं है ये राहुल रॉय दस्तावेजी सिनेमा वाले हैं सबा दीवान साहिबा भी सिनेमा बनाती हैं दस्तावेजी सिनेमा बनाती हैं आप दोनों लोग पिछले 25 सालों से लगातार सिनेमा बना रहे हैं सिनेमा दिखा रहे हैं सारी दुनिया में आपका नाम है इनकी फिल्मों के जरिए हमें अपने समाज के अक्स को समझने में मदद मिलती है तब क्या जरूरत आन पड़ी कि हम पूरी बिर, फिल्म बिरादरी को उनके साथ खड़ा होना पड़ा पूरी फिल्म बिरादरी को इनके साथ इसलिए खड़ा होना पड़ा क्योंकि इन्होंने अपने समय के जरूरी सवालों पर चुप रहना मंजूर नहीं किया आप सब जानते हैं दो साल पहले ईद के समय फरीदाबाद में एक किशोर बालक की जिसकी अभी मूछे भी आना नहीं शुरू हुई थी जिसके अभी जिसकी आवाज भी बदलनी नहीं शुरू हुई थी एक ऐसे प्यारे से बालक जुनैद की निशंस हत्या हुई मॉब लिंचिंग हुई और सोशल मीडिया के जमाने में जब उसकी खबर आग की तरह फैली तो बहुत सारे लोगों को मायूसी लगी बहुत सारे लोगों ने इस मायूसी से निकलने का रास्ता सोचा ऐसे ही मनोदशा में सबा दीवान ने एक मुहिम शुरू करी फेसबुक पर एक छोटी पोस्ट से नॉट इन माय नेम मने मेरे नाम से मैं इन सब चीजों में शामिल नहीं हूं और देखते देखते ये कैंपेन पूरे देश के अमन पसंद लोकतांत्रिक ईमानदार लोगों के मन में उनको छू गई और पूरे देश में ये सिलसिला चला नॉट इन माय नेम का और फिर नॉट इन माय नेम ने तमाम जरूरी मुद्दों पर पहल की और ये जो बात बुद्धिजीवियों के बारे में कही जाती है कि वो अपनी दुनिया में रहते हैं वो सिर्फ अपनी ख्याली दुनिया में रहते हैं इस धारणा को पूरी तरह से इस कैंपेन ने तोड़ा और लोगों के बीच में 
लोगों के साथ लोगों के दुख दर्द के साथ कलाकारों की बुद्धिजीवियों की एकजुटता को बनाने का एक बहुत ही जोरदार मंच बनाया सिर्फ सिर्फ ये ये नामंजूरी ही कारण बनी सभा दीवान और राहुल रॉय के लिए और वो तत्कालीन सत्ता जो अभी भी काबिज है उसकी आंख की किरकिरी बने और उनको परेशान करने का सिलसिला शुरू हुआ इस साल फरवरी में उत्तर पूर्वी दिल्ली में एक अलग ही तमाशा हुआ एक खास तरह के एक खास संप्रदाय के लोगों को निशाना बनाकर दंगे किए गए और जब उन दंगों की को जानने के लिए जब समझदार नागरिकों की टीम बनी तो बाद में सरकार ने जो लोग चीजों को ठीक करने की कोशिश कर रहे थे उन्हीं को फंसाने की शुरू करी पिछले दिनों लगातार इन दो फिल्मकारों को सत्ता की तरफ से परेशान किया जा रहा है ऐसे मौके पर हम अपने देश के तमाम लोगों से अपील करते हैं कि आप अपने इन इंपॉर्टेंट अपने इन खास अपने इन जरूरी फिल्मकारों को जानिए कैसा इन्होंने इंपॉर्टेंट काम किया है तो पांच फिल्म कलेक्टिव और तमाम फिल्म बिरादरी के लोग जुटे और उन्होंने ये बीड़ा उठाया कि हम इनकी फिल्मों का फेस्टिवल करेंगे इनकी जो एक्सप्रेशंस हैं इनके क्रिएटिव एक्सप्रेशन हैं उनका हम सेलिब्रेशन करेंगे और हम कोशिश करेंगे तमाम लोगों को बताने की कि ये कितने इंपॉर्टेंट लोग हैं कैसे इन्होंने समाज की तमाम तरह की तहों को सवालों को जानने की कोशिश करी है तो तब शायद आप इनके साथ जो मुहिम चल रही है खड़े होने की उसमें और मजबूती से खड़े होंगे चार फिल्में राहुल राय की ली गई हैं सिटी ब्यूटीफुल सुंदर नगरी मजमा वेन फोर फ्रेंड्स मीट जब चार यार मिले और फैक्ट्री ऐसे ही चार फिल्में सवा दीवान साहिबा की ली गई हैं दिल्ली मुंबई दिल्ली नाच सीता का परिवार सीतास फैमिली और द अदर सॉन्ग और ये जो पांचों फिल्म समूह हैं ये अपने अपने प्लेटफॉर्म से इन फिल्मों को दिखा रहे हैं हमने पिछले तीन दिन सुनंद नगरी फिल्म दिखाई राहुल राय की अभी एक बातचीत मेरी इस अपील के बाद पेश की जाएगी रिकॉर्डेड बातचीत है जिसमें हमारे देश की एक और महत्वपूर्ण दस्तावेजी फिल्म का सुरभि शर्मा गौतम भान जो रिसर्चर हैं और संजय श्रीवास्तव जो समाज शास्त्री हैं वो राहुल राय की इन चार फिल्मों के बारे में उनसे बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट बातचीत करी है आप लोग इस बातचीत को सुनिए और मौका निकाल के इन फिल्मों को देखिए ये सारी फिल्में आप सबके देखने के लिए विशेष तौर पे उपलब्ध कराई गई हैं जो आप सिनेमा ऑफ रेजिस्टेंस के फेसबुक पेज या कि मरुपकम के फेसबुक पेज या विकल्प पृथ्वी पेडेस्टन पिक्चर्स और पीपल्स फिल्म कलेक्ट कलेक्टिव कोलकाता के पेज पर इनके लिंक आपको मिल जाएंगे 
आपसे अपील है कि आप अपने समय के इन महत्वपूर्ण फिल्मकारों को जानिए उनके काम को जानिए और उनके साथ जो जाति हो रही है उसके खिलाफ खड़े हुई अगर हम अपने समझदार लोगों के साथ नहीं खड़े होंगे तो हमारे साथ भी कोई नहीं खड़ा होगा और दूसरी बात है जो सही बात कर रहे हैं जो ठीक बात कर रहे हैं जो सच्ची बात कर रहे हैं जो हमेशा लोगों के साथ रहे हैं उनके साथ खड़े होने में क्या बुराई क्या डरना बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया आपने पिछले तीन दिनों हमारे प्लेटफॉर्म पे फिल्म देखी हमें उम्मीद है कि आप आगे भी देखेंगे ये सिलसिला पूरे महीने भर चलेगा अब हम देखते हैं राहुल राय के साथ तीन और महत्वपूर्ण लोगों की बातचीत बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया Uh, hello everyone uh, welcome to a festival of films celebrating uh, the work of sabal sabadevan and rahul roy uh, this is a festival put together by a collection of film collectives spread across india called in solidarity uh, we thought this is a fantastic occasion to really discuss uh, the works of rahul roy uh specially spread over four films he has a much larger repertoire but we are looking at four films that are going to be screened at this festival uh which are when four friends meet uh majma the city beautiful and the factory uh we have with us uh, gautam bhan uh urban studies writer and researcher uh welcome gautam and we also have sanjay shrivastav a sociologist who has primarily primarily looked at urban studies and masculinities in his work his most recent book is entangled urbanism uh, slum gated communities and shopping mall in delhi and gurgaon uh, in a sense both gautam and sanjay's works talk directly to rahul's films and rahul's films talk directly to their work uh, so this is a fantastic uh, opportunity to to bring these three in conversation I am Surabhi Sharma, documentary filmmaker from Mumbai. Uh, been a keen follower of Rahul's work. Uh, his work has really influenced and informed me. And I have also been looking at uh, informal labor in uh, cities, primarily Mumbai. And uh, in the recent past, uh, a certain lens of masculinity has also come into my work through. uh bhojpuri music and the the production and performance of the music in bombay so these are four people who are very in people who are very invested in the city together uh i would like to open with just uh, sort of uh, drawing out the broad uh, ideas around rahul's work uh one of the first thing that strikes me uh which is very different from my own work is rahul's work is really like an ode to delhi uh all four films are located within delhi uh apart from the themes within the film there is uh, a a very keen and clear both affection and commitment to the city and that comes through or shines through actually in all four films very very vividly
forums because I've always loved both what they've given to me, but also what they can open up. So it's just, it's a real pleasure to be able to talk to you about this. And I'm also happy because I get to, um, in a sense, ask Rahul a set of questions to give him a chance to reflect a little bit on how one reads these four films together. Right? Um, let me talk about Majma, City Beautiful, Factory, and When Four Friends Meet. And so Rahul, the first thing I wanted to ask you is, one of the things that really strikes me in watching these films as a set is a sense of, you know, thinking of the mode of making a film as an act of chronicling, um, as an act of bearing witness of certain kind. You know? And I think that I'm struck so much how often, you know, one that there is this intimacy of your presence in all of these films. You know, you feel like you're inside a home in a conversation over dinner, and there's that whole there's an idea of sort of a receding camera almost. But you're you're always present, but in this deeply intimate way. And I think that there's many ways in which we talk about cities. We often tell very grand histories. I think Delhi particularly is one of those places that has these long, sweeping, grand histories. I wanted you to think to talk to us a little bit about the the way you think about your work as a filmmaker, particularly on this idea of being a chronicler of the city, being a you know being a is it about the notion of telling histories, of bearing witness, of of chronicling change, of simply holding on to a moment amidst all the multitudes of changes that are going on? Um, how do you how do you think and position your own work as a way of of chronicling. Uh, thanks, Gautam. Uh, um, I think, see, part of it was an accident in the sense that uh, it wasn't really planned the way uh, my sort of Delhi uh, foray into uh, do chronicling Delhi unfolded over many years. Um, my, my uh, you know, first film uh, uh, on, uh, which I could say is really on Delhi was when four friends meet, uh, yeah. which was, um, you know, which it's only when I, after I made that film, did I uh, start really very seriously thinking of, uh, of that film being the sort of, uh, uh, you know, the first step towards uh, looking at, at, at larger time in the city. And looking at how actually one can, uh, you know, uh, start mapping, uh, you know, uh, the city and time, and uh, not in terms of uh, of just uh, sort of, um, you know, as 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 time which is uh, uh, which can be uh, read in terms of uh, you know two thousand or two thousand four and two thousand eight and two thousand ten. But really, um, how how do how do people and landscapes and and uh, you know their memories and their experiences change over time? And does that itself uh, become a story of a city as to what is really happening to people over over uh, you know over over several decades? Because Four Friends, uh, you know, as you all know, uh, was followed by the sequel about 12, 13 years later. Till we meet again. Because four friends ends at the point where uh, you know where we say we will meet again after ten years and see where everyone is. Um, so, so you see, uh, to tell you honestly, uh, when I finished four friends, um, and this was also the time when I had sort of this was my early years of engagement with the theme of masculinity and and young men. What I realized our post the film was that. Here is a film which is looking at, uh, at at spaces which can broadly be called really the liminal spaces, which is neither home nor really the outside, but these are these sort of intimate spaces created uh, by uh, my characters and and with me. Um, and as and as I was struggling to make sense of uh, and, and trying to come to grips with my own understanding of, of masculinities in men's lives and informal uh, you know, labor lives, uh, what I felt was that I've done a film which is looking really, which is in sort of nowhere space. Uh, yeah. What about the public space? How do we start looking at 
at lives, at, at masculinities, at you know, informality of labor in a very public way. You know, what, how, would, how would you sort of uh, uh, do something like that? And that's how Majma was actually, uh, you know, uh, I got, I made Majma, which was entirely in a public space, which is a market. You know, there is uh, you know, the entire shooting is just for a couple of sequences. I go inside homes, yeah. but otherwise the entire film is in a in, in a public space in a market, and uh, so it so it was you know going from one space to another, uh, looking at uh, at uh, as at at people's lives, and once I had finished Majma, uh, you know I felt that you know I'd done a film which was in this nowhere space I've done a film on an entirely public space what about the domestic what about entirely a film which is completely inside and that's how city beautiful was born you know which is a film actually entirely in the domestic space and from within that space it's reflecting on the world and on what is happening to people outside uh, and what do they come into the domestic space with and what do they bring into the domestic space Men and women, and uh, and uh, and the really and the film City Beautiful, of course, moves uh, a step uh, ahead of these other two films, which have basically uh, male characters. Uh, mm-hmm. And City Beautiful actually then I and because it is the domestic space, it's a domestic sphere. Uh, you know, women had to uh, play a very uh, you know central role, and so. You know, women come into the film, um, and you know that the relationship between uh, men and women, uh, in a very sort of intimate way, uh, you know, I explore. So, so what I'm trying to say is that you know, um, part accident, part the way uh, I thought of the films. I think those all sort of somewhere. Uh, now, with hindsight, I can say that look, if I look at a film made in 98, 99, and I look yeah. at a film made in 2013, and look at the same space and the same people who had filmed in 98, 99, you know, you get a sense of the city and what's happened to the city, both visually uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the landscape and what's happened inside people's heads and minds. So, so it's, you know, so the chronicling part was, uh, it's happened because of the way I thought of the films. And, uh, but it was not to sort of, <laughs> uh, you know, to answer your question uh, directly. It was not even part of strategy. But even if it was a more serendipitous archive, I mean, the fact that you thought consciously about moving between these type of spaces is what gives layers to those different kinds of stories and allows them to add up. You know, I, and it strikes me so much, you just call City Beautiful in your mind, a turn to the domestic. And in a way it absolutely is, but you know, I was seeing it again yesterday after a gap of many years. And what really struck me was both between this and the factory was, you know, one of the big questions we struggle with in urban studies and research, not just in film, is how do you tell the story of these big structural changes? There's from industrial capitalism to new forms of economy. We have all these shorthands, post-91, liberalization, new economy. But how do you hold on and feel a story like this? Like how, do you, how do you manage to think about what that big structure is doing? And what was really striking to me this time in City Beautiful was just how much I kept returning to this move from handloom to power loom, and how much it became a kind of moment that held this, this, you know, a moment that you put your finger on that say, you know, this domestic is structured by these larger shifts in the things we have understood as work and value and economy, you know, and, and I think that one of the things that has really always, and even in terms of masculinity, it's this ability to, and I wanted your reflection on this, is, is an ability to say, can we humanize big structural shifts in a way without losing the larger structures of power, without making it one household story, without ma- but not also needing it to be representative of every household story. And, and, and in some way, I, I, you know, 
I wanted to get your thoughts on thinking about how one moved between this, the story of a neighborhood defined by a mode of production that can no longer hold it, but also make it a story of intimacy and masculinity and employment and pride and social norms. So is there a, is there a way in which, how does one think about bridging this individual story with these big structural changes? And that goes back to moving between the city and the person, the anecdote and the case and the pattern right, in some way. And research, we grapple with this in a very different way. But in film, yeah. you've done it in a very different way. No, in fact, see, that was the big challenge for City Bureau. For, in, you know, when uh, I started researching for, uh, for City Bureau, that was what hit me straight on very early. Mm. That here is an entire community which is, you know, which is going through a massive shift and change. Uh, because of the grand sort of you know, you know uh, the liberalization and and the big huge economic changes that are happening in the country and it's and it's affecting this entire community and now to me um, it's what was the, the challenge was not to get locked with you know trying to explain the the big change but to be able to actually you know make how do people make sense or how do the people live through that change? What, what do people you know, feel through that change? How do relationships change through that, uh, through that change? How do people start looking at relationships differently through that change? And what it does, uh, see, let's also not forget uh, that you know, the point is that uh, there is also something to be gained here for people, especially for women. You know very Absolutely. clearly, and uh, so in as Ratha, so that as Ratha says in the film, and she's trying Shakuntla to make a move. Yeah. Shakuntala has already made that move. Radha is Absolutely. you know on the verge of making that move, and see the other issue uh, which was very clearly there was the, the change in the nature of labor. You know, handloom, the way it was, where it it involved family labor, that was shifting to wage labor. So there was, you know, the kind of you know, changes inside families in that within that community was was like, you know, it was ex completely, you know, changing entire family structures and and uh, and power equations within families in a dramatic way. So now, as a filmmaker in that sense, you know, I, we are much more lucky than Professor Sanjay Shivasto in the sense that. You know, our work is corporeal. You know, it has to do with with bodies and you know, uh, and with uh, you know how one can see and look at at, at real people and human beings and, and and see. Challenge is of course to go beyond that into what is happening inside people's heads, and uh, and be able to you know get those thoughts and feelings and stories out, but. Yeah, it was to me. It was very clear, uh, you know, uh, in that film right through that. While I was dealing with, you know, as to why all these shifts and changes and and, and dramas happening in this family was happening because of these large shifts and changes that were happening in the Indian economy. But I had to sort of really focus on yeah. these, uh, you know, families and the extended community, and keep sort of pegging at it through stories, through, uh, you know, um, through frustrations, through just the look on people's faces uh, as to what was, uh, you know, that change about in, in yeah. people's real lives. So one last one from me before I, I, I hand over to Sanjay for a bit and pop back in. You know, again, this question of time and space that you've brought up several times, and I think it's, you know, that's what's really strayed with me is how much of this unfolding, you, you know, and it just goes back to that sense of chronicling, right? because this is not something one can unearth in a moment. There's a kind of ethnographic presence that has to be built over the sense of time. And I think here there's, there's such a notion of importance of understanding this change, but also giving us a language 
in which to talk about the change that is not just the, the conceptual and the structural and the academic. And I think that's what I got from so many of the films reading again, to talk about masculinity in a way that men speak of their bodies, to talk about labor in a way that, you know, talk about honor and work as this line has stayed with me all, all day yesterday when, um, you know, Radha is trying to get out and go to work in City Beautiful and he talks about Bezati and she says, Bezati to ghar mein shuru jati hai, baha jane ki ka zarur. You know, and I think that it's about this, this I, that the language in which the arguments are made is, is itself an archive of its own, paralleling all these other ways we diagnose structural histories. But I felt in some ways that with Factory, actually something changed in, in some ways. It felt very different to me from the other three. It had to be, of course, it is a completely different, it felt like an encounter in some ways that you had. I felt in the film, I could see so much more of you a sense of anger, a sense of bearing witness. And it was, in some ways, the most explicitly structural films. I mean, there were slides with data and numbers and talking about economic changes. It was, and it certainly retreated into the intimacy. I remember at some point, you know, there's a shot of the train when you go to the home of one of the arrested workers and you speak to his wife. And then it's back to sort of a, a Rahul Roy film I recognize, right? And it gets quiet. And then she's talking about, and she says, you know, she's praying and you say, do you believe? And she says, I used to, you know, and it's just this, this little moment of quiet where you realize what it means right, to be in a context of, of, of being on the outside of this. But the film also has um, a much stronger sense of saying, this is the way we must look at this. This is the truth of this, right? And it's an encounter with, and just like Cotton, uh, just like City Beautiful, talked about cotton polyester, talked about the economy as its structural ghost. Here it's the law and it's the courts and the police stations and you're recreating these artifacts, you're reading from judgment documents, there's the typewriter typing the case number, you know, there's all this, there's the form of saying, I'm actually talking about something much bigger. And it felt like a different voice, sort of urgent and necessary and, and even in moments angry in a way. And I just wanted to hear from you a little bit in that way about sort of, you know, taking this presence and listening to these stories, but also saying, you know, th there, is, there, is, there is something I have to put on the ground here. There is something I have to say here. Did it, did it feel similarly to you while you were making it in that way? Did you feel different from the other set of films that we're talking about today? See, all films have stories. You know, uh, the point is that each film has a beginning and a, and a unique beginning. Um, and with each film, you are, you know, as a filmmaker, you are, uh, you know, entering into a dialogue with your own history of films and filmmaking, as well as, you know, the grammar and history of filmmaking practiced by others around you. All that's constantly influencing each film. And uh, with uh, The Factory, it was, you know, uh, for a long time I'd given up on making sort of explicit political films which dealt with an immediate political issue. I'd kind of given up on it. Uh, that's how I started my filmmaking career, but I just, you know, dropped it for, for issues and reasons which uh, when I dropped it, I maybe I didn't have the wherewithal or the competency to somehow be able to penetrate, uh, you know, uh, the the world of politics and yet be able to humanize people. Because to me, the real project of my, uh, you know, documentary practice is how am I able to really humanize people? That's my central sort of object. And that's what, uh, you know, I constantly work and rework with that idea. And uh, I, I and when I stopped when I stopped making explicit political films, um, you know, which dealt with the uh, important political issue of that moment, uh, I it was out of a lot of frustration as to how do you actually, uh, you know, make a film which is, uh, you know, on an on a political event or a political moment, and you know, which is, uh, you know, politically alive and yet be able to to be able to look at people and to be able to create uh, narratives and characters who are human you know who are not superheroes or who are super villains 
but you know are actually humans with very you know different shades uh, that i you know uh, was a challenge and uh, factory in that sense was an attempt to go back to where i started and be able to do something uh, which was um, you know which was politically uh, a live issue and an iconic struggle really the maruti worker struggle is an iconic struggle and uh, an heroic struggle with you know all the actors being really heroic and you know 147 of them being in jail and uh, how do i then uh, make a film which is able to uh, you know which is political but yes is also has is able to actually deal with all those uh, people in ways that it goes beyond just a political issue film you know it still has human beings criss crossing traveling through the film and as you you know know that from my other uh, my other sort of abiding interest has been the everyday as to how do you tell stories about the everyday and and you know what what does the everyday hide uh, and uh, how do you how do you you know how you how can you actually get uh, stories from the everyday which become you know uh, which can become uh, you know stories which tell us much more and so uh, so what i set myself up as a challenge was can i do a film which is on the everyday of a struggle which is actually been defeated which is over there is no struggle the struggle is over it's defeated uh, you know there is a court case going on with 2500 workers out 147 workers in jail being tried for murder and uh, is there an everyday to that uh, you know moment in the struggle and how how do i get to that every day of that struggle and what can i speak off through that so that was really what i was trying to to do and also you know you pointed out about that train sequence and this other woman in fact there is that other sequence with one of the leaders when i you know in his house i have a conversation with him and his wife and uh, and you know which is important in the sense that to me as to how what becoming heroic is there are you know there are various stories behind that and there are ways in which people are are entangled into that heroism which we never hear of you know we don't hear of the in a working class struggle film you never see the domestic uh, it's always about actually the the you know what's happening outside and what's urgent and what's uh you know on the street or uh, in sort of meetings so in that sense i i try to sort of put in the domestic you know i try to get in an aspect which you don't see in a political uh you know struggle film and to see what is happening within the domestic in this even in this moment of of a struggle so so what i'm saying is that each film poses its own challenges and you try and answer those through your film making practice and through you know what you see of other people's work and engage with so that was that's the story behind the factory and we are we are lucky to have that constant attempt to find an archive of an urban every day you know through which to read these larger these larger uh, changes and and you know i could ask you endlessly about also what your films say about urbanization and the nature not only of delhi but about cities that i'm sure sanjay will pick up some of those themes so let me let me hand over to him for a bit i'm eager to also say think of the things in his responses and his questions too sanjay okay thanks thank thank you and uh, thanks for organizing this so uh yeah we've had various conversations over the years including in other parts of south asia so um yeah we should been uh, you know people not just from india but from other parts of uh, that part of the world so let me begin with just one question it's not it's it's more not not really a question but i think it's like more a uh, something to like a discussion point so um of course uh, the films are um, you know masculinity is a theme that runs through the films 
And um, one is, of course, to think of these men in very specific contexts in the work and the city and public space and the domestic space. So that the films obviously tell us something about men in specific contexts, which, uh, which uh, you know, which, which, which will, of course, at one, on the one hand, give us the impression that this is some, something called masculinity is a, it's a very solid thing that they are a part of. But of course, your films also, uh, uh, for, for the viewer, uh, for the viewer is also about the kind of the unmaking of masculinity for all these men, right? So they may have, in, the, in other sort of happier times, these men would have been much more certain of the masculinity. When they had jobs or when they lived in villages, you come to the city and you are the bottom of the hierarchy. Um, so the heroic figure is, of course, a very, very also a figure that is completely being undone in the city. That's one sense that I have, you know, if you, if I, if I watch your films. And then, and so that's one part I wanted to talk to you about. And the second part is, of course, that um, um, you, you yourself, as a filmmaker, as a particular kind of person, may not, while you're filming, obviously, may not necessarily subscribe to their notion of masculinity, you're, you're recording their notion of masculinity. Uh, now, given these two contexts, one is the constant um, unraveling of their sort of working class masculinity, much more than say mine or yours, because we're not necessarily put in that position. And the second that you may not subscribe to it. I wonder how you avoid, and there's this tendency, I guess, um, in many, uh, it could, there could be tendency in many, many such recordings of, um, the men, uh, and, and, and obviously you try very hard, but that doesn't happen, to come across as caricatures, right? And, uh, and I, because it's, uh, for, for, because the audience who watches these films is a very specific kind of audience. A lot of them may not obviously uh, subscribe, whether it's in, when five friends meet or whether it's a city beautiful, or even Majma, for example. Right? So there is for an audience, there may be um, kind of a, uh, not inherent, but some kind of thing to, to think of them as caricatures, people who are completely removed from us. And, you know, they're strange, and uh, and I wonder how you and it, and it doesn't happen. And I'm saying it doesn't happen, and I wonder if you, when you were making this, uh, you had any of this when you were thinking about it. Because for me, the most significant thing would be that I'm so removed from their worlds, and that that that, that they may come across to me as caricatures. But the film, I think, manages not to do that, but to record these masculinities as men position certain structures and this is what happens to them. And I wonder if you, if when you were making these films, whether this was something that, um, that, that, that you were thinking about, to, to consciously avoid them coming across as some kind of caricatured people, you know, men. See, <clears throat> um, see when, I, when I meet, when four friends meet, uh, you know, it was, um, the second film on 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 masculinity, very essentially, with you know the thought that I'm making a film on on masculinity. It's my second film on on that theme. Um, the starting point actually was very interesting in the sense that uh, you know this came out of a project where four films were made in Nepal, Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh. Now. The filmmakers, when uh, you know, and the first meeting of all the four filmmakers was a process where actually we didn't talk about the films because you know when I was designing the project, what I felt was that the all the four filmmakers should be approaching the project from the their own position of being male and being men, and how does that how is that consciousness and self-awareness going to actually make the project and how will that uh, you know how will it inform the project was the starting point so the actually the first meeting of the four filmmakers in uh, in Kathmandu was a workshop where all four of us were locked in a room and we went through our own experiences of of growing up of of uh, you know uh, of relationships of uh, all kinds of stuff as to that we could identify as uh, that those were critical to our own, you know, becoming what uh, men or, or our unmaking of our masculinity, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, so, um, so that was actually the first thing that we did in this project. So in that sense, it was 
it it entirely informed the film that I I made because actually you know a lot of the stuff which I know people find funny and 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 you know uh, and the sort of uh, you know misinformation and lack of information or or the mythologies uh, I actually grew up with them. I grew up, uh, you know, in, in in small towns, and I grew up with a lot of those issues in my head. So it was not as if, you know, there was a separation of class between me and uh, you know uh, uh, Sanju Banti Kamal and uh, Sanjay. But you know, the fact is that uh, for a you know at least till my early teens, I had I had the same uh, thoughts in my head. I grew up with those. Thoughts. It is only that you know my class and my education and my cultural background gave me an opportunity at one stage to, you know, cross that, and uh, and uh, you know be able to acquire you know experiences and knowledge and and be kicked by women especially uh, to become slightly more sane. Otherwise, I had those exactly the same. I grew up with those same ideas. So, in that sense, you know. It, it was not something which I ever felt it was coming into from, uh, you know, these strange uh, things being said by these characters. It was actually a harking back on my own memories of what I was like and what I thought like. So in that sense, there was, you know, there was a full, uh, there was a connection. And because it, that connection was there, I think it also gave me uh, certain indications as to what of how to actually you know what can you do in uh, you know in these kind of situations where you know things are being said which some people may find offensive some people may find troubling some people may object to uh, and these are your characters these are people that you're working with in your film what do you do then you know and only uh, you know and the related uh, question that always comes up is is about these very intimate spaces and this very very uh, you know intimate uh, conversations and um, so the way at least i have handled it is that as long as i actually have a genuine respect for people i'm working with in a film you know that respect itself will take care of how that character ultimately will look like evolve in that film and and that is the golden rule that i follow that as i shouldn't lose respect for the people i work with if i don't lose respect of the people i work with then the film will will unfold you know with that same feeling it'll be it could be tough on people you know, it, I'm not saying that you have you can't be tough on people, but there is a way in which that respect, if you have that respect, it will get reflected in your film. You know, I'll give you an example of Hira Lal in City Bureau. Okay, Hira Lal is a character that you know, Rina and I, Rina uh, Mohan, the editor of the film, we struggled with. We've never struggled with a character as much as Hira Lal. For in a film, and Rina and I have edited. Rina has edited a lot of my films. The problem was that Hira Lal was, you know, we could have made. You see, that's the thing about filmmaking. You know, it's ultimately you can you are you can make a character look like anything. You know, uh, even if it's so-called documentary and and and, and the real. The way characters, uh, uh, you know, get formed in a film is entirely in your hand. And and Hiralal could have been a really dark black character in the film uh, because I we had all the material to make him into a really dark black character. But but there were the, but that wasn't Hiralal. He was that also. He was a dark, uh, you know, character. But he was also a beaten character. You know, completely beaten at that age by uh, the circumstances, and so he 
so we actually worked and worked and worked till we felt we got a balance and we got a you know we got a sense of what hiralal uh, you know at least in my experience was a, a, you know is as a human being and so i think that is what uh, you know a long answer to your question sanjay but that is how you have to work with uh, you know uh, with uh, building uh, characters in a film so when you say uh, when we were happy with that we got a balanced picture I mean, what 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 when uh, what does that mean what uh, what would it mean so that uh, so someone watching it doesn't have a, has a sense that um, uh, that See, if you, it's, it's a complex world you're dealing with. Uh, so if you look at Hiralal through in City Beautiful, yeah. now, you know, you can see him as someone who is, you know, an alcoholic, who is abusive, who is, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, is lying around doing nothing, ordering his uh, daughter-in-law. Hmm. But, but then you have, you know, other sequences with him, which show his vulnerability, which shows, which show actually his, you know, uh, as to you know, what he's trying to do, what he's trying to think that how he's still desperately trying to figure out how can he get work, where and how can he get work and how can he go there. You also have Hiralal as you know, which is a kind of a really side sequence uh, in the film about uh, you know as a as a Navratra singer. And, uh, you know, it immediately, you know, Hiralal starts looking much more uh, complex character than just someone who is, who we could have actually, we could have just had him as really this, you know, this nasty character who, uh, you know, who's terrible in the domestic sphere. And, uh, and I, unfortunately, that's what you see most of times in films. You know, you have characters who fit certain clear slots because you are you want to say that you want to create that sharpness of of black and white and uh, and so in uh, you know and to me uh, I, i'm not interested in black and white at all i'm not interested in making sort of these you know ideological uh, you know victories through making these cliched statements so if you are a human being all relationships are troubled you know there's no perfect relationship in this world. All relationships are true. And, uh, you know, yeah. and we all behave in all kinds of strange, weird, terrible ways in various uh, relationships that we are. We are sometimes good, we are sometimes bad, we are sometimes mm -hmm. terrible, sometimes we are absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and if I'm doing a film which is on relationships, uh, you know, which is so centrally on relationships, the character should be able to reflect that entire spectrum of of experience of a relationship. And I, I think that uh, if, if the uh, Hiralal or other characters were in fact uh, sort of cardboard cutouts, then the other thing that you were, were able to do in your films, I don't think you'd be able to do, and I think something that Gautam has also alluded to, which is to think about structure. Like what is the structure in which people are based? Otherwise you, otherwise, because otherwise you do get quite often films on say men and masculinities or working class, which are, where because uh, you know the, the central figure figures are very much figures that we can easily identify as this or that there's no sense of structure we have no idea what it is that makes people and that's i think why you're able to um, it seems to me uh, make people think about structure which is very difficult I can, as in writing i can write I and mean, this is like you know this is industry and this is class and this is change in from Buddhism to whatever it is and that but I think it's much more difficult thing to do in a film because you can't show structure. I mean, if you show a factory, it means nothing, right? I think, and uh, so is that, is, I mean, is that something that you, I mean, clearly, I mean, you, you know, in broader discussions, you think about that. But is, but to think about how do you actually show structure when in the film, in a visual thing, it's impossible to just show a factory and say, this is the class structure, right? You can't. <laughs> I know you started off by saying that unlike academics, you look at real people. But, uh, but, but I want to ask you, how is it that, that because I mean, it would be, I, is that something you think about? Because I, I find in lots of films are easy, very centrally about men and masculinity, but there's no sense of what structure people men are in. Why is it they end up being 
that kind of man in order to sympathize with them, but try not to understand what's trying. Is that something you think about? Uh, all the times, and in fact, that is the starting point most. You know, uh, fact is that you know, we had some good training in terms of research. And starting point for our research is always the struggle, in a way. You know, you read all the books and you read everything, all the material available. So actually, you're starting, uh, you know, uh, with the structure. And uh, the fact is also that a lot of, uh, you know, my earlier work, uh, you know, and Sabha and I, when we used to do work together, uh, uh, make films together, we, a lot of our films were about the structure. So we did this series called Women in Agriculture. Yeah, which, was, <laughs> which was which was actually about the structure and uh, then we tried to fit in you know women into that structure our characters and to somewhere make our argument and that's what i rebelled against at one point i said i cannot do this anymore i cannot actually have a, a you know a, a, a dissertation on structure and then put my characters to prove my various points. So, so I had to do it the other way around. You know, uh, that how do I actually start from characters and come to a structure? Yes. Is it yes. possible to do that? Can we inverse it and, uh, you know, and reverse it? And can we still come to a structure through uh, actually how, you know, and how people talk about, you know, it, in the most sort of everyday way, how people talk about something that's happened to them, something that's, that's it. how they're making a call to some guy or, you know, it's, and I, I, you know, I felt that, you know, the point is that it's not that, you know, looking at my film is ever going to, uh, you know, explain the entire sort of, uh, you know, change in the handroom sector and, and uh, the emergence of power looms and things. No, that's not the purpose. And uh, I'm not interested in that. But I am interested in, in actually, you know, people somewhere locking into the idea that, that there are these things going on in the background. And there is an emotive sort of attachment that these things are emo emotive shifts and changes that are happening to people's lives because of these large scale structural yeah. changes. And by mapping those, uh, you know, and by, uh, you know, by finding those, it's, it was really like found objects. And, uh, you know, by finding those objects, it's somewhere, you know, are, uh, are, are mapping the emotive journey, journey of, of people through these, uh, you know, structural changes. Yeah. Can I still have a comment on the, on, 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 on the structure and also a, a critique as well as, uh, you know, as, as something which becomes evidence as that, you know, it's also witnessing it. You're right. I think those early films which you referred to are, I mean, these are your words. I don't feel guilty. I mean, kind of dissertation on structure. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't say it, but anyway. <laughs> okay, finally. <laughs> and I remember that film. I can't remember where it was, but somewhere in the village. Bad film. That, you know, no, no, I'm not saying it's a bad film. You never said it's no, a bad I'll, film. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what we used to do. We used to write an essay. And yeah. you know, we used to research and to read thing. No. For you, it's not bad. For a filmmaker, it's terrible. So, uh, you know, you would read all the books possible. You would gather all the literature possible. You would talk to all the experts possible and then write an essay. I remember. Yes, I remember. So, yeah. And then go yeah. about finding characters who would, yes. you know, fit into that essay. Yes. Uh, okay, finally, because I've probably running out of time. You know, you said that you moved from um, uh, filming in a sort of in-between space to um, household and to the public space. But actually, I mean, and in fact, and the factory, which is a sort of both a mixture of both. But I, I have to say that I, whenever I watch these, all these four films, I thought they're all about actually liminal spaces, because in all these films, although although in your mind you say that you have this is about a family, a domestic space, this is about a public space, about special space, in the, the in the minds of the characters, uh, there, there's such there's a huge there's complete contiguity between. Uh, I don't see the characters themselves imagine. 
So I always thought of them, in fact, and that's why it's easy for me to discuss if I use them in a classroom situation about the city being this completely mixed up space, although we might say there is domestic and there is a public. In fact, in all these films, they're always, to me, about threshold spaces. The people are always on these threshold spaces, although at least um, lit, uh, sort of in a putatively, obviously, filming-wise, they may be in one specific space. I'm kind of, I'm not disagreeing with you, but it seems to me as a viewer, um, uh, my sense is that it allows me, in fact, these films to see the city as having these sort of household and street, et cetera, but actually the kind of places that people occupy are completely on thresholds. They're never really within the household or on the street. And you see that in Majma, for example, which is about the street, but then Barkat, for example, and the, and the others, I mean, they seem to be always not distinguishing as much as you might as a filmmaker between these two spaces. Yeah, no, uh, see, when I uh, said spaces, I meant that, uh, you know, there is a physical space that a film has to deal with, you know, uh, and within that physical geographical space, um, your characters have to evolve or occupy or, you know, uh, tell their uh, stories or, uh, you know, events have to happen around uh, that physical space. So in, so I, I was talking about that those are the sort of three, you know, really sp uh, spaces that to me um, became in interesting to actually get into the conversations. Yes, you're right. It's actually the, the, the intimate conversations which are limited, which can happen, which could have happened anywhere. You know, but the fact that they're situated in in certain physical spaces is what I think is giving them specific meanings in the context of each of those films. And uh, you know, uh, and I think that is what I was uh, trying to, uh, you know, at least for myself, uh, defining for myself a a space and which is my limit, by limiting myself to that space, what kind of a story can I tell? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, okay, I, quickly, I think what, uh, the other thing I want to add was that um, I, I, have a, I, got, I have a sense when I watched these films that if you were filming people of a different class, they would have a very different sense of space. Whereas the, the people you work with in these four films, their sense of space is very different. And it's also I mean, interesting for me, genuinely, because it's something you can explain in a way that you can't quite often in an article or a book to, to a class, to, to, a, to a class of students about different meanings of space for people of different backgrounds. So that's what, that's what I mean. Okay, back to Surabhi or Gautam. Yeah, actually I, I wanted to uh, come in because uh, just to pick up uh, from, from uh, just save me, from save me, from save me from these two academics. <laughs> Yeah, they were very, uh, yeah, so sweetly, man. <laughs> it was lovely actually to hear them because they managed to sort of put together a lot of my own thoughts about your film in a far more succinct way, I, I suppose. But to, to put on the filmmaker hat, uh, just one, one thing that I've always wanted to actually talk to you about, but somehow again in many discussions it never came up. Uh, you know, what I found fascinating seeing all four films together, actually, is that both Majma and When Four Friends Meet are both films that are very, um, <coughs> that are led by you. The structure of the film is determined by you in a manner of speaking, you know. You sort of intervene and propose questions and, and, and uh, observations and so on and so forth. Whereas in The City Beautiful, you allow what's happening to people that observation starts uh, determining the flow and the structure of the film and and that continues in the factory i'm not using the word an observational film for either city beautiful and for the factory and thank god for that because i find that that form a bit uh, problematic but here uh, you know in these two films uh, you really step back and maybe dismantle your own pieces <clears throat> almost entirely. You're willing to do that. To let what's happening with people and what they're saying really determine the shape of the film. 
I know it's a continuous journey and one would have led you to the other, but I was also wondering if it was the theme or the time you were at, the times you were filming in that determined this shift in the way you structured your film. Uh, no, Surabhi, I think that, you know, partly it is about an evolving practice and, uh, you know, with each film, you look back and see uh, how you could have done better or what you could have done better or, you know, how would you have done it differently. So I think by the time I made The, the City Beautiful, uh, my practice itself had come to a point where I was, uh, you know, I'd, I'd made a decision uh, that... I am going to sit in this place, in these two houses for one year, and I am going to see what, uh, you know, what uh, I get and how do I, what do I encounter through that one year in these uh, two, uh, you know, houses. And uh, so, in that sense, um, you know, those, that decision you know, started informing how I was filming and what kind of, uh, you know, uh, way in which I would, uh, you know, I would, I, I would, uh, uh, I would get the material for, for a film. Um, the other thing related is that, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is that, um, you know, I am not really a filmmaker who, you know, was taught much of filmmaking. So, uh, we just struggled making films and we learned, uh, you know, whatever we learned out of uh, actually our own practice and of watching other films and, uh, and with some sort of discussions with other filmmakers. So, uh, so actually for a, till a certain point, I didn't even know what, uh, you know, uh, you know, what kind of, how would I, would you slot my film? It's only when my films actually started, you know, traveling uh, to film festivals and especially uh, to Europe, when Europeans told me that I'm an observational filmmaker, I said, okay, thank you. Now I know what kind of a filmmaker I am. So, uh, but the fact is that I'm not a purist, you know, and I'm not a purist because I've never not really, uh, you know, uh, learned uh, filmmaking by putting myself into a certain uh, way of, of, of making films. Um, because, you know, even with City Beautiful, which large sections of the film fall into the category of really observational cinema, but then I puncture it also. You know, even that conversation with uh, Radha's mother is not an observational <laughs> cinema conversation. You know, uh, so, so I do puncture that uh, thing constantly. And, uh, and I, I'm happy for it because I am really not a purist. I think you know any kind of purity one should be very sort of scared of, especially in these times that we're living in. Um, and so, uh, so that was uh, you know uh, one thing. The uh, other uh, issue. Um, um, what was your other uh, the second part of your uh, question, Sylvie? I'm sorry, I should have. Noticed. Uh, no, there was no second part. I actually did not mean it as uh, me. Yes, I can see that your film language was evolving, but I think there's there's a lot of of value and and uh, a, a lot to hold on to in Majma and in Four Friends Meet. So I wasn't sort of positing them one against the other, but I was also wondering about the the times that we are living in and we are moving through that in a <laughs> sense impact your way of making a film, you know, uh, more and more it seems like as filmmakers and as Gautam said, chroniclers, more and more we have to step back and to make sense of what's going on, let things unfold. And perhaps 20 years ago, it was possible for us to try and, and say things uh, in, a, in a clearer way, perhaps. So I was actually trying to think about these 20 years through which these four films are made and what possibly has changed uh, through that. Yeah, but you know, uh, Surabhi, say, uh, you know, Gautam was also raising this issue of chronicling uh, early in the conversation and, and especially given the, you know, our, the circumstances we are living in. 
I think it's so, so critical right now to build an archive of, uh, of uh, you know, of human life. Because, uh, you know, a time will come when you need resources to rebuild, you know, and uh, to somewhere get sanity back and to actually have, uh, you know, uh, ways in which rationality and reason can come back to, you know, our lives. And if we don't have this archive, actually, uh, you know, how will that reason and, uh, you know, sanity ever uh, come back? This is really, so in that sense, I, you know, this entire issue of, of chronicling and, and, and archiving, I think is, is critical right now. It's a critical moment for in the documentary practice also to, to really have that archive. Or when, you know, when people will look for ways to regain reason, there will, has to be an archive through which, you know, it happened everywhere. Even in Europe, it happened. People actually just built archives while, you know, all kinds of mess was going on uh, to, with the thing that it will be important when, for reason and sanity later. And I think it's, it's very important to keep, in different ways, all of us have to do it. It's not just a question of documentary. Uh, just as a as a final thing, you know. So this 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 commitment to the archive is is of course a very important idea, and it's one that has really motivated your work for all these years. But I feel that it is also a certain uh, both commitment to to a sense of dignity, as you said, humanizing everyone, but also a certain commitment to hope. You know. So even though you say uh, the 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 factory was in a sense chronicling a failed movement uh, and, and there is that sense of disquiet and, and injustice you leave us with. But at no point do you feel a sense of just overwhelming dark despair. There is a way in which to keep thinking forward. And again, uh, to come back and really tie up what both Gautam and Sanjay have said is to bring it back to real location. There is a Gurgaon. There is a Sundar Nagari, there is a Mina Bazaar, you know. Uh, so th there is a way in which one has to, uh, to look at a city afresh, look at what's going on afresh, both from the moments of vulnerabilities and intimacies, but also these, these broader political strokes, economic strokes uh, that are sort of, you know, tempering uh, the way we move forward. So uh, I can see that we are sort of running out of time. If there's any last uh, comments, Gautam or Sanjay, that you might want to make, or Rahul, that you might want to come in with, uh, you know, just some last thoughts, perhaps, uh, Gautam? I mean, just, just briefly, I think, <clears throat> uh, you know, just to take a, uh, uh, just to take a moment of appreciation and of gratitude, uh, it is not, it is not easy uh, putting oneself in a moment to absorb all the grayscale that Rahul has talked about holding on to, especially if it's that if it's the one of a very complex human existence. You know, and I think the placeness of his work as a person who shares his love for, for Delhi um, to have its to have. I mean, I think of these films and seeing them together. I had that same sense. I felt an archive in which I could find both my city and myself. And at that point, it doesn't become about the stories of others or about moments in time. It actually becomes about how, like Rahul is saying, archives allow you to find yourself in a shifting present. And they allow you, allow you to find roots and traces of imaginations of a future, of different kinds of futures. And um, I have never thought of that. Um, I think that's, that's why they're not memory. That's why they're not nostalgia. That's actually why they're the work of building time. Um, and building aspirations. And I, I, I think that the opportunity that these films give us to, to reach back and mark ourselves and be present is just a gift. Uh, and I think I'm struck again by what lies behind this gift, right? Rahul talked about how heroism entangles us in different ways, but this, an archive of 20 years, also has a lot behind it. And I think it's just, just a moment to appreciate the fact that this archive is with us, that we have this chance, this body of work, 
and a commitment to building this kind of um, that this kind of archive to offer to the world. So, so just thanks Rahul for being a chance to watch this work, to experience it, and to just selfishly use it as a complete mirror to self and survival and hope. Um, you know, in a in a in a strange and complicated time. So I I, I think it's a, it's a gift, and I'm very grateful to be able to to receive it. Thank you, Gautam. Thank you. <clears throat> Some last, Sanjay. Uh, you're muted. Sanjay, you're muted. Yeah, well, I, I won't add very much except to say that, I mean, I think uh, I summarized very well what I think many of us would feel. And also, I think, you know, I, and I, this is meant as a compliment. I even think of Rahul's film says EPW with pictures and video, and that's good. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. <laughs> so so it just, just before you say that, these academics rescue us from these academics. So we survive so, on academics without academics, we won't be doing our, our films. Right. So, but 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 I think that's a good thing, you know, in order to to be able to do that, um, because you know it's a different language and it adds, it supplements other kinds of languages we have of speaking about the city and masculinity and labor, capital, and whatever, whatever. So yeah, I think it's it's great to have a kind of an EPW with pictures and audio. That's um, it's, uh, you know, just to have EPW by itself, you know, would not be enough. That's great. Thanks. In, Thanks, in defense of academics, in defense of academics, I'm going to declare that Sanjay's joke and not not belonging to the larger community. <laughs> I'm abandoning you, Sanjay. I'm going on the whole side of things. I meant that in a good sense, and I think it's good to have films that allow us to look, think about things like structure, even for people who don't necessarily want to think about things. Because that's uh, what the forces are doing. Yeah. Otherwise, people would come across as caricatures. But because they don't come across as caricatures, it's precisely because the films allow us to say, well, why is it that people are like this? There has to be, you know, there's something else that all of us are part of. Not some individual. So there's there's not individualized biography. They're not individualized, psychologized um, portraits of people. They're very yeah. social portraits of people. That's important. Yeah, and these these portraits, as you rightly said, Sanjay, uh, Rahul's camera has a way of really dignifying uh, these portraits. Uh, so there's okay. there's always a sense of a, a non-judgmental and a deeply Deeply, I keep coming back, back to that word, a deeply affectionate kind of gaze with which you are able to sort of locate them as people, but also in a setting that needs to be understood and read. Um, I think unless Rahul, one last comment from you and we should... I just quickly add, the other thing what's very important is that you know, a lot of these films are screened a lot in NGO context, where quite often people say that, uh, you know, there's someone does theory and we do practice. But I think these films also bring across to them that two are completely linked. So I know that a lot of these films are used in NGO context, so that's, and that's very important. Yeah. Sorry, you go ahead. Thanks, Sorvi. Thank you for organizing this. It's been really a pleasure and uh, it's lovely to be here with all three of you. And at this point of time, I really needed this. But thank you, thank you, Sanjay, thank you, Gautam, thank you, Rahul, and thank, thank you, you, Rahul, so for making these photos available to us so that we can really engage with them at, in many ways. So thank you all. Uh, I will stop the recording and only uh, just wait.